uh, another question here. Iman from Egypt. Okay, she wears the abaya and wears the hijab, but does not cover her face, obviously. And someone told her that it is obligatory for her to wear the niqab to cover her face. The issue of covering the face is a matter that's been disputed between the scholars. We cover this issue repeatedly, and I normally prefer that whenever we discuss this issue, I present the two views. If I come to you and I say it is obligatory to cover the face to a woman, that means if you don't cover the face, you're a sinner. And I just disregarded the other view completely. But if somebody who's studying and believed in the other view and adopted that, then he is or she is, if her husband is assisting her to make the decision, they are adopting a valid view, which has been adopted by uh, numerous scholars. So I would not say it is obligatory. I would say it is, in this view, mandatory or obligatory. There is another view which says covering the entire body except for the face. What do myself, what do I myself believe? I believe you should adopt this view. But the other view is valid as well. And I would not consider a woman who is not covering her face a sinner because she's adopting a valid view of the scholars as well. And until the Day of Judgment, these two views will be available. There is a very interesting thing that's worthy of mention here, which is uh, the scholars who said that it is not necessary for a woman to cover her face it is merely recommended or mustahab. They adopted this view. They said, but behold, in case of fearing the fitna and the temptation, right. if the sister is pretty, has a beautiful face, or if we're living in such a, a horrible time where people just, you know, look at women in their faces and so on, in this condition, she should cover her face. So we find the two schools have met at this point that if you believe there is a fitna then that means there is a general consensus between all the scholars and the schools that covering the face becomes mandatory not just mere recommended and to solve this problem for every woman who's trying to make that decision you definitely by doing so copying the best role models the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his daughters and the wives of the companions. The dispute of some people who misinterpret the verse and say, but guess what? Allah commanded that only on the wives of the Prophet and his daughters. I say this is an invalid dispute right. simply because Allah said, Ya ayyuhu nabi, qul li azwajika wa banatika and what is the third? وَنِسَاءِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ يُدَنِينَ عَلَيْهِنَّ مِنْ جَلَابِي بِهِنْ ذَلِكَ أَدَنَا أَنْ يُعْرَفْنَا فَلَا يُؤْذَيْنَ So the command of hijab in general or a veil was, O oh, the messenger or the prophet of Allah, tell your wives, your daughters, and the women of the entire ummah to lower their garments or their veils upon them. So no one of the women is exempt, except Al-Qawa'idu min al-Nisa. Those who are very old women, they find difficulty wearing the veil or covering their face. In addition to, there is no attraction whatsoever in them, and they have reached an age where they do not even expect to get married. So there is no fitna. In this case, they are permitted not to wear this veil, or cover their face in order to make it easy for them since the fitna does not exist anymore. Thank you, Sheikh. Sheikh, we'll take our next question from Amina from the United States of America. She was asking about the niqab. Is it wajib or is it a must? Is it differentiates from one woman to the other? Al-Imam Ahmad, <coughs> may Allah have mercy on him, and Al-Imam Shafi'i have agreed that uh, covering the face for a woman is a must. They relied on uh, the verses and the interpretation of those verses. Surah Al-Ahzab 59 Ya ayyuha al-Rasul qul li azwajika wa banatika wa nisa'i al-mu'minina yudinina alayhinna min jalabi bihin. So, Abdullah ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him and his father, said, 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding the Prophet ﷺ to order his wives, his daughters, and the women of the Muslim Ummah to lower their garments from their head to their toes, covering the entire body. And he showed uh, one eye and he said, this is how a woman should wear it. Uh, the verse, Ya Ayyuhan Nabiyyu, Qul li azwajika wa banatika wa nisa'i al-mu'mineen, Surah Al-Ahzab, verse number 59. Nabiyyu uh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in several occasions, such as when he escorted uh, Safiya, uh, when he was in Atikaf and she was covered totally and he stopped his companions and he said that she's Safiya, she's my wife. And Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, although when she narrated that uh, in Ihram we used to cover uh, our, uh, we used to uncover the faces and the hands. It's not permissible for a woman during Ihram to cover the face or the hands with gloves unless if it is surrounded by men who are not mahram. That indicates in regular times it's a must. Now we come to Imam uh, uh, Abu Hanifa uh, Malik, may Allah have mercy on them, who said that uh, covering the face is recommended. It is not a must though. But we turn around and we say then uh, the school of Imam Abu Hanifa or Imam Malik are of the view that covering the face, even though it's recommended, but it becomes a must during the times of fitan, when there is a fear of fitna, or whenever a woman is, is extremely pretty, she should cover her face because this is a source of fitna or temptation. Okay. So we find that the vast majority of the scholars meet at, in case of the fitna, such as nowadays, where the fitna is so widespread, it is, a woman should cover her face before uh, an unmahram.